Hi, welcome back. This is the second video in the introduction to the Land Rover restoration videos that I'm putting together. Um, if you watched the first one, that was the station wagon, the long wheelbase, which you can see on the screen now. However, when uh, I did the, the talk about that video last week, uh, I pointed out that there was another chassis on display. Um, some people may have, may have spotted it. And that's the one I'm going to talk about um, today. So, as I said last week, the long wheelbase has been in the family for 40 odd years. And when my father started restoring it a good few years ago, um, the engine that was in it um, was, uh, it seen better days. So we decided to have a look around to find a replacement that was, obviously we were doing this on a budget, and a few miles away between Manchester and um, Liverpool we found somebody that was selling an old lightweight, Series 3 lightweight. It was in very poor condition and we we just assumed that you know the, we couldn't do anything with it the chassis had completely rot rotted through um, the bodywork was in not the best condition however the engine in it was a, a relatively modern uh, petrol two and a quarter five main bearing so the plan was to um, I think I think my father paid a hundred pounds something like that uh, the plan was to go and collect take the engine out scrap the lightweight um, salvage what bits we could um, and, and sell them on and then use the engine in the in the long wheelbase which was fine when when we when we got it home the the chassis as was described was in very poor condition and we took the engine out and prepared it ready to go in the long wheelbase and then uh, shortly after that I believe my father had a change of mind and obviously we could not use the chassis it was completely shot there was there was hardly anything left it, it could not be reused um, however he managed to get a good deal from Marsland chassis and they basically sold him a zinc galvanized lightweight chassis um, I believe he got it for a, a fairly good bargain um, as was his way and so yet another project started and that is what um, I'm about to talk about so the actual chassis itself uh, when it arrived it was delivered it, it came on a, on a big flat bathe and we carried it into the into the back garden it was in the garden was in better condition than this and then he, he sort of spent the evenings working on the the main running gear basically just to get it up on wheels um, he only he only got so far as the the rear axle um, you can see those with the keen eyes can just about make out the front axle is actually still mounted um, it's just none of the uh, the, the 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 basically the wheels weren't put on it um, but on on the rear the axle was done it was in fairly good condition um, it was stripped down new bearings new gaskets um, it was running dry at this point because obviously we hadn't uh, we weren't thinking about putting it on the road at all um, the thing that was going for it and I think probably the reason why he changed his mind was the actual bulkhead uh, which is a, a, a completely different design anyone that's used to the series 3 and and or but basically any of the series um, knows the knows the the overall shape of the of the bulkhead whereas on the on the lightweight it is a slightly different design you can see it's squarer along the top you have the you have the two door pillars and they they form part of a rectangular shape basically and the there's a beam that goes right across the top and where on a series the bulkhead then takes a sort of uh, 15 degree bend where the air vents go you'll notice that they're missing on this that's a completely separate part that bolts on through these holes here so it means that it can be stripped down a, a lot more and other than surface rust the bulkhead was in fairly good condition at some point in in its history somebody had modified the uh, driver's side footwell uh, probably to take a V8 um, it's actually it, instead of it being square and running parallel there it actually there's a slight dog's leg in it it kinks slightly 
and you can see that it's been welded in it's been brazed in this panel so my guess is that was done to make more room at the back and we didn't want to put a v8 in it we didn't have a v8 um the idea was source another engine and put this put it in this um, now this picture you can see the actual chassis itself it's as i say it's galvanized it's also been um, etch primed and chassis painted as well so it's covered in chassis paint so the actual chassis even though it's covered in mold and green um, there's nothing wrong with it at all um, you can see the the axles and the, the the front leaf springs they've seen better days as well again it's just surface rust though um, so a few years ago when um, shortly after I moved the long wheelbase to start work on that one um, we had to basically exit the garden uh, we were selling the house and I decided to bring the smaller Land Rover to my house um, I had a small or I have a small sort of single uh, single bay garage that it would just about fit into and uh, so that, that was the plan basically um, we uh, took off the bulkhead took the axle off took the, um, the the front and rear axles took the wheels off and got it into a position where I could bring it home in in a transit van and put it in the garage and hopefully start work on it and that's basically where it sat for um, another few years again um, things tend to get in the way friends family you know other commitments um, and it basically stayed leaning against the wall of the garage for a number of years uh, the good thing is it wasn't rusting um, everything was now um, out of the wet and shortly before all of the uh, all of the covid thing kicked off uh, about a year before I, I sort of thought right I'm gonna I'm gonna actually start doing this because there isn't much to it you know and anybody that's restored a series Land Rover knows that, that it's like Meccano that, that there are you know that there's lots of parts but it's not a particularly complicated vehicle to put together so I started by working on the on the chassis so basically I there wasn't really much to do all I had to do was remove all of the green mold so I, I, basically, I basically took it back down. I took off the existing paint that was on it, um, reapplied etch primer, reapplied uh, chassis paint. So I got that back into, uh, into into good working condition. I then worked on the springs. Uh, you can actually see them better in this picture. So the rear and front springs, um, again, surface rust and a bit of green mold. That, that was all that was really the problem. Uh, one or two of the bushes had gone, so I replaced those. So again, they they were clear, they were taken off, they were cleaned, uh, pre uh, prepared, made ready. Um, I did run into a problem with the, and it was kind of strange. The the two front uh, leaf springs, they were the originals from 1976. This this model was uh, made, and both front leaf springs, um, the front um, bushing completely snapped off where the um, if anyone people that are used to, I don't have a picture of it so it's difficult to explain but basically where, where the spring comes up to the bushing and wraps around the bushing both springs decided when I, while I was cleaning them that um, they'd fracture at that point which it's probably a good thing that they did do because I wouldn't like that to have happened while I was driving um, it wouldn't the springs wouldn't have come off they would have just it would have fallen and then, then it would have rested on the, the 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 main part of the leaf spring. It wouldn't be held in by the um, uh, by the, the the hook as it goes around the um, the bear uh, the um, the bearing. So uh, I had to source two front leaf springs. Um, luckily, I found via eBay somebody was breaking one and managed to find the exact same pair, which was good. Uh, you can see by these images here that the the rear axle again a little bit of surface rust. Uh, I stripped that down. The actual in, the insides I knew were in good condition because my father had done it a few years ago. Um, I, I checked them out anyway, but basically I, I took the the outer casing of the bo of both axles down to bare metal, etch primed, um, and then painted the back up again. 
so they they were in pretty good condition. Um, now I did have the all of the parts um, for the front axle. Here you can just see that it's the the outer casing basically. But I did have all of the actual uh, the gears and the bars, so they went in, and I was able then to get a a rolling chassis, and I then found all of the the panels. So they had been taken off and stacked in different places. Uh, they, they were scattered all over the place so I, I went around and found all of the panels and these aren't fitted fully at this point this was just me bolting them to the chassis to make sure that I had all of the parts and that there was nothing missing um, it also left it in a, in a condition where I could then start preparing the actual body panels themselves check for any damage and um, basically just clean them up, get them ready um, you can see in this image by the way this has the the top part of the bulkhead added now it's it's held on with one bolt uh, which you can see just there where the pointer is uh, but this this part here the whole top part comes off as a separate unit which is i think is quite handy because i know that some people have major problems uh, in fact i'm watching a series on uh, on youtube now where uh, somebody is actually in the, in the process of rebuilding a complete part um it's quite impressive and i wouldn't i wouldn't like to do it myself but um having the bulkhead in a position where you can just replace that top unit um, in in my opinion makes makes good sense so from this point I, I knew I had all the body panels now what was missing w were the driver side door I was I didn't have it at all um, I believe when we actually bought uh, this vehicle it did exist however I I believe it it was completely rotted through and uh, when we came to dismantle it, it just fell apart. Um, the result of that is the hinge. If you notice, the, the hinges on the lightweight are different from the series. So these are two parts, and the one the, the part that's attached to the bodywork basically just has a pin, and that's that's the male side of it. And then the the female side is mounted to the actual door, so you can swing the door open and lift them off. So obviously this vehicle is designed for uh, the, the military and desert work, basically anywhere where you may not want to have a door in the way. Um, so th these were designed so you could quickly and easily take the doors off. So the driver's side door was missing and one half of the hinges were missing. So I had to basically manufacture. You can buy them. Again, I'm a cheapskate, so I opted to make some. The other part that was missing was the rear tailgate. Now, when we bought this uh, vehicle, it, someone had fitted a hard top to it. So I did have a set of side panels and a roof. However, my plan was to have this as a, as a fun vehicle. Uh, and you can't have fun in a hard top vehicle. So the plan all, from, all the way back to the beginning was to put a... Um, to put a canvas top on it the way it should be uh, as far as I'm aware they only ever came with a canvas top if anyone knows different um, please let me know but as, as far as I'm aware they, the this particular version only ever came with a with a canvas top so the the actual engine um, if, if you remember f from my previous video I was talking about the station wagon I opted to um, put a 200 TDI in the station wagon that then meant that the engine that came with this lightweight uh, was now sur uh, surplus to requirements so I opted to put it back in uh, which you know why not uh, so that that is the engine that came with it um, you can tell from this picture that it needs uh, it needs a good clean um, but again I, I threw it in to make sure that everything was there that it was that it was basically running and that I could um, make make use of it because at this point the engine hadn't run for probably best part of 10 years so I just didn't know I didn't know its condition um, it ran when we first collected it but a lot can happen in 10 years um, so I do actually have let me see if I can uh, just jump out of there I do have a video of when I got the engine up and running so this is um, basically what once I've got quite a lot of the bodywork done, um, and this is sort of just a test. test it is. So, 
So it um, you can tell by the, the 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 sound of the engine it needs um, it needs a bit of work, but it does run. Uh, it does work, which is the important thing. Uh, so basically, during the the first lockdown of the COVID, um, I actually did quite a lot of work. I got the all of the running gear done, quite a lot of the body panels done. Um, now I it, this vehicle should go back in theory to um, to green. It should go back to military matte green. However. Um, I, I promised some people that I would not paint it green, um, political reasons. So I opted to go for Battleship Grey um, with black trimming, shall we say, uh, matte black trimming. Um, I opted to hand paint it. Um, I sprayed some parts, some of the body panels, the larger ones I, I sprayed in the garage. But most of the uh, most of the little bits and pieces were hand painted with, with rollers and uh, Battleship paint. Um, and that basically got me to this position here so you can see the tailgate that I made um, it was made with um, a few lengths of I think this is 30 mil square tubing I just sort of cut, cut it to shape and then uh, put a uh, put a sheet of aluminium on the back and uh, it, it works really well it's a bit heavy than the the, the original but um, it does the job um, it's there I must admit, I, I do quite like the uh, the colour scheme, um, the grey and the black with the, the sort of the, the silver rivets showing through. Um, again, I'm also a cheapskate and I, I didn't want to, par partially because um, I couldn't justify spending the money on uh, an Exmoor trim um, set of uh, metal, you know, the, 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 the tilt and the canvas. So I, I opted to make my own, uh, and this was sort of the first, uh, the first test. So I, I used a pipe bender and got some uh, 30 mil conduit. Uh, actually, it's, it's not conduit. This is um, it's uh, uh, pipe. Um, I think the wall is about three mil thick, and basically measured up, cut it to shape, bent them to the to the approximate shape. They're not a hundred percent symmetrical. They're out ever so slightly but you would have to stand there looking at it for a good few minutes to to notice the difference um, and then started putting in the braces at the front uh, you can see that there's one here but it, it's not there on this one uh, this is mid mid work there's also some braces that go across and a middle piece that goes in between uh, if anyone's familiar with the way the the, the the normal tilt fits you've got the two you've got the um, the two main frames and then there's sort of a half frame across the top where there's a horizontal part that braces them together. Uh, I also made a, I'm not going to call it a headrest but it, it fits up up near the headrest and that was so I could attach the um, the seat belt in, into this, this, part, uh, this part here. And I, I don't at the moment have any images. Uh, I will do an update following this showing the, the canvas top because um, that is now done. Uh, again I, I sourced the canvas material myself and then started making the panels and um, I, it, it's, I, I quite like the finish. Uh, it's not quite finished yet but it um, again it fits with the, the grey and the black. So. I think this is the last image I actually have. So this is currently where it stands. Um, other than the um, the canvas top, there isn't much. But th there's a bit more painting to be done, as you can see. All of the electrics are in. The uh, the engine's cleaned. Is now running. Um, the all of the the rest of the running gear is working fine. And during the um, the the COVID lockdown. I finished it to the point where I could uh, MOT uh, tax and insure it. Now due to its age it's under a classic vehicle uh, road tax so um, there's nothing to be paid there and it's also you you are also able to self-declare the MOT so um, a nice lady at the post office talked me through filling out all of the forms uh, I then went and got some fully comp insurance and I was then able to drive it on the road. So this 
when I can get the video to play. This is the this is the first time the vehicle has been driven uh, on the road legally in over 15 years, and it was it was quite an occasion. And for some reason, as soon as I started reversing onto the road, everybody decided to to drive onto the road. Weeks had gone by, and the road was almost empty. And as soon as I tried to reverse out, everyone decided to just suddenly jump on the road. So there we are. Uh, I've never understood uh, why people make uh, do videos with uh, in portrait mode. Um, monitors, TVs, films—they're all landscape. So hold the camera, landscape. Anyway, um, it was good that she recorded it. Um, but that's currently where we stand. So hopefully, I will have some more videos soon uh, showing the, the canvas roof and finishing off the body panels basically getting it into a condition where um, I need to do the glazing on the 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 windows on the on the both doors uh, but after that it's pretty much in in a, in a position to use um, I wouldn't like to drive it in cold weather because uh, you would need to wrap up extremely extremely warm but um, hopefully over the next few months there should be some follow-up videos um, showing the the final touches uh, and also the the I replaced the wheels as well so you'll be able to see those at some point but anyway uh, thanks again for watching this far those that have stuck stuck with the video um, not everyone does but that's fine um, but if anyone has any suggestions any ideas um, would like to um, know anything about it please drop me a message um, I'm more than happy to discuss um, this or if, if you if you're working on a similar project more than happy to discuss things um, things where I've sort of run into problems um, you know any, any problems any questions please um, feel free to ask so uh, thanks again for watching um, if you know anyone that would like um, to watch these videos please pass on this information to them and um, please watch any more future ones thanks for watching